what is a good GMAT score for you? Hi, my name is Christian and in this video, I want to clarify some myths about what a good GMAT score is because you might have seen around the web numbers thrown around like 750, 700, 650. So for example, is 650 a bad score? Is 700 the minimum score that you should accept? I'm going to break that down all in this video. Okay, so what is a good GMAT score? As you might have guessed, the answer is it depends. It depends on the MBA program that you're aiming for. Now, each program has a range of GMAT scores and they publish it on their websites, giving you the lowest score that was accepted in the previous year and the highest score. Now, that doesn't give you the full picture because not everybody is at those extremes. So they also give you like the middle 80%, which gives you an idea of what is a good GMAT score to stand a really good chance of being accepted. Generally, if you want to aim for a top 10 business school, you would need to score at least 710, okay, preferably 730 or above. Now, that doesn't mean a 680 is a bad score. It just means that it kind of limits you in which options you can apply. There are very good business schools that are not top 10 that will get you accepted with a 680. Now, although a 680 or 690 or 670 does not guarantee that you will be accepted, having a good GMAT score represents a very good first impression. Now, on the other hand, if you have a low GMAT score, you will need to balance it out with a strong essay and strong letters of recommendations. Now, I want to explain what each score means for quantitative and verbal, because they're not the same. As you can see in this chart, we have two metrics. We have the score and we have the percentile. Now, verbal and quant, they both go up to 51 in score. And each score has a percentile associated with it. Now, what the percentile means is how you compare to other test takers in the last three years and not the percent of correct questions that you had on the test. So, for example, in quantitative, a 49 means that you are above 75% of the test takers in the last three years. Now, I've color-coded the range of scores according to excellent, great, good, and low. So this is what you should aim for. And the first thing that stands out is they're not the same. So, for example, in verbal, if you were to score a 41, that's excellent because you are above 94% of the test takers in the last three years for verbal. If you were to score the same 41 in quant, that would be really low. Right? You are below average. Okay? So that's a 43 percentile. What this means is that verbal has a little bit more weight in your final score. So if you are aiming for a 700, for example, more than half of your score will be because of verbal than because of math. Now, for most people, if, for example, you are just starting out and you take a simulation, a practice test, and you score low in quant, for example, a 36, don't be scared because it's actually good news. Since the percentiles for these scores are really low, it means that it's easier and faster to score higher. For example, if you go from 36 or 37 to 43, you are still at about 50 percentile but you increased six points. Now, as you go up, the percentiles become higher and it gets a little bit trickier. But even so, 47 and 48, which are really good scores, are still not that hard. 63 percentile and 69 percentile. The scores that are really hard in quant are 51 and 50. Notice the big jump in the percentiles. Here, it's 6. Here, it's 11. And here, it's 10. 
Notice the percentile jumps in verbal for these scores. 2, 0, 2, 1. So, in verbal, if you are scoring uh, 31, that's a score that's above average. And if you are about 38, okay, that's when it gets a little bit more tricky to increase your score because you're already at a high percentile. And notice that the scores from 45 to 51, all of them have 99 percentile. Okay, so finally, I want to show you some examples and some combinations that you should expect in order to get these scores. Let's start with 700. For 700, what I consider to be the most balanced score is 48 and 38. Okay, because if you see quant 48, it's 69 percentile, just not that hard, and 38 in verbal is 85 percentile, which is not not too high. If you were to score higher in quant, you would still need a relatively high verbal score, such as 35, just 76 percentile. And especially if you get a lower Quant score 46, which is 60 percentile, just a little bit above average, you will need an even higher verbal score, which is 40, 91 percentile. And so you can see if you want 740, you absolutely need a high verbal score, even if you have a high quant score. Okay, so 40 in verbal from 91 percentile above that will be able to get you 740 if you also have a high quant score. Okay. And if you go lower for 660, for example, you don't need to have that high verbal score, but still you need to compensate with a moderately high quant score. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. And be sure to check out our website www.mbaprep2ring.com for more information and I will see you in the next video.